Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're getting back to work on this build. This is our ultimate SG style guitar kit build with the flame maple veneer from Solo Music Gear. Let's get to it. So this is a beautiful kit. If you haven't seen the prior video on this one, we unboxed it. We took a look at all the upgrade hardware that I'm going to be putting into it. This is a commission job for someone and they let me pick all the hardware essentially. So yeah, full responsibility on me. We're going to be doing a really cool black finish on this one. It's going to be a trans black for the bulk of the top. I showed the um, veneer in the last video. I don't know if you can focus on it properly there, but it's beautiful. Um, so it's going to be a transparent black for the, most of the top with a fade from opaque to transparent kind of taking place in the top third here. And then the back and sides are all going to be opaque. Um, I've had people comment before that I was ruining guitars by painting opaque colors over top of mahogany. Everybody does that. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's mahogany, it's a standard wood. So I'm gonna be doing that. Um, sorry if that bothers you. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at some fit stuff. We're gonna make sure that the neck fits properly, widen out this hole if we need to to get the neck in there more comfortably. We're gonna make sure that the scale length is accurate and make any adjustments that we need on that piece. Make sure that the neck angle works. And uh, I'm replacing the bridge from this one with a Gibson bridge, which has a completely different post hole size. So at some point here, I'm gonna be filling these holes with dowels and re-drilling them unless it's very, very close. If it's very, very close, you've got a bridge post that's just a little bit sloppy, you can actually just wrap masking tape around it and jam it in there, and that solves that problem completely. But if it's substantially bigger, which this one is going to be, particularly for the bridge, maybe not the stop tail, you don't wanna be doing that, you gotta fill those holes and redrill them. So that's what we're gonna do. This video is gonna take a while to film, but that is just fine. Let's bring the camera in closer and uh, get to work on this. Okay, first things first, we're gonna check and make sure that our neck actually fits and that it fits well. Pardon me, I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit. Now, if you do want one of these kits, if you wanna follow along, check out the Solo Music Gear website uh, link in the description. That is an affiliate link, so it helps me out if you use it. Um, I wanna note though that with Gibson's recent, whatever you wanna call it, uh, some of the shapes now are gonna be probably a little different. I don't know if they've changed them yet or even if they're going to, but. I get the, the feeling that some of these guitar kit shapes from Solo and from other kit builders are gonna shift a little bit. So you might see something that looks a little bit more like a, an ESP Viper, for example, a little bit of a lopsided version. Let's take a look at this neck fit. And that is too tight. I could hammer that in there if I wanted to without damaging it, but as soon as you get glue on these things, they tend to swell a little bit. So you don't wanna be, you want a nice snug fit, but you don't want it too snug. So if we look, yeah, I can get that in there. It's nice and tight, but I think I probably need to loosen that just a little bit by taking a, you know, a millimeter or so off the edge. Before I do that though, I'm gonna check my bridge fit so that I can check my scale length. So I'm gonna get this Gibson bridge uh, unwrapped here. I got the, I'm gonna use a knife. I got the Gibson bridge and stop tail as upgrade hardware. Now the bridges that come with these kits actually aren't bad. Uh, I don't mind them at all. And you can obviously go with other aftermarket stuff, but we're going for a specific kind of look on this guy and a specific kind of feel. So I figured we're gonna go back to the Gibson style bridge, the more old school unit. And you can tell just by looking at this, this is not even, not even close to the same size, which is fine. That's not a problem at all. But we will have to, like I said, put something in there to get that to work. No. Real smooth there, bud. Okay. So that's that. Now we take a ruler, a meter stick, and check what our lengths are. So we, in order to check the scale length here, I'm sure everybody knows this, we wanna make sure that the distance from our nut to our 12th fret is the same as the distance from the 12th fret to the bridge, or at least close enough to be within the adjustment capabilities of these nuts, which have, you know, almost half an inch, probably three eighths of an inch of adjustability. So we're 12 and three eighths there, and 12 and three eighths here. Nailed it, okay. So what that tells us, 
sorry, let me put this down, is that we don't have to take any meat off the end of this heel to be able to shove the neck in further, and we don't have to shim anything or whatever to bump it back out. It is set correctly with this pushing right up against the base of the hole here. This is the tongue that comes at the bottom of the neck. We jam that right in, that's set perfectly. Again, this is pretty snug, but it's actually got a little bit of play right at the back, obviously. It kind of, where it pinches here is where it hinges. Makes total sense, right? So I think if I focus most of the gluing back there, I'm actually gonna be able to get a perfect neck joint without having to shave any off, which is nice. Not that shaving any off is, is risky. I, I mean, I just use a really sharp chisel. I've got those hollow ground ones from Solo that I would use for this, like I did with my last SG kit. But this is gonna work well. So the next thing that we need to check is the angle so that we know that we're not gonna end up with the strings coming off of the nut and banging into the bottom of the fretboard before they make it to the bridge. We can raise the bridge up a little bit, and we will as part of our setup, but we don't wanna have to raise it up too far. So what I do, hang on, let me move this camera again so you can see what I'm doing. We'll refocus quickly here. So what we do for this, making sure that this is pushed in, is just run it from one of the nut slots down to the bridge ever so carefully and make sure that it's gonna work. So what I can tell you is this runs nicely on the fretboard, which is important because we don't want the neck going off at an angle. Okay, screw it. Runs nicely along the fretboard. Yeah, no worries there. It's something I always check ever since I did that. Oh, that stupid guitar fetish kit where the neck went off at an angle and nothing lined up properly. But also, we have a bit of a situation here where if the bridge is at the very base, we're going to end up with contact at the bottom. So do I need to shave part of this down? That is the question. And the answer depends on how high the bridge needs to come up. Yeah, I think we're good. I think that angle, that angle is going to work just fine. Particularly once there's some string tension on here, it's going to pull this up. This thing's perfect. All right, so I am totally satisfied with how that looks. It's actually perfect. The neck angle is correct, so I don't have that issue with uh, the strings bumping into the bottom frets as they go to the bridge. That's all set. The neck is straight so that the strings are going to run on the fretboard on both sides and not have any weird issues there, which is important, particularly with a guitar like this, because we've got a book matched veneer. So if, you're <laughs> if your neck is off, then you have to move your post holes and stuff. So you would have to make those adjustments to the, to the neck before you put it on. Important to test fit all of this. I've never had an issue with Solo's kits. They've always been good for this sort of thing, but it is important to check. They are mass manufactured, right? So you gotta be careful. Um, and you know, there's always that concern that something like that could go wrong. You also have to make sure that that scale length is accurate when you're putting it in because the holes are already in this thing. You can't just move the bridge afterward. It would be a huge pain. So check all of that beforehand. I'm very happy with how mine turned out. The last thing that I'm gonna check here, let's see if I can do this, um, is my Gibson stop tail, which I've already taken out. I'm just gonna check the post hole fit. Thick, real thick. Okay, so I'm going to have to either use the pegs from the stock kit, I'm pointing over there because that's where I have them, or the bridge from the stock kit, probably not, or drill those out bigger. I think what's probably going to happen is I'm gonna use the stock posts. Like I said, that's where I had them. Let's just check and see. Those are, of course, a perfect fit. These are the ones that came with the kit. And that works perfectly. All right, so it's time to glue the neck in. I don't have the dowels handy right now to do the bridge holes. We'll do that soon, though. You probably didn't even need to know that. I'm, I'll try and get that into this video. Once we get the neck glued in, we'll go ahead and check all of our fret work. They look beautiful, but I got to run over them all with the fret leveler, uh, sorry, the fret rocker and make sure that they're level and everything. We'll wait till it's glued in. I'll also have to check that my truss rod is adjusted level before I do that. But for now, let's get this guy in place. So this is a pretty straightforward process. Like I said, I don't want to get too much glue right in this area. I want some, but not too much because I don't want to risk it swelling. That could cause me some problems later on. Um, 
I do, however, want a little bit extra in here. We do need some kind of block for the back. That's what I've got here. And some clamps. Two clamps is what I'm going to be using. And I don't need a block for the front because I'm going to be clamping right onto this. But if this were, you know, a different kind of glue-in neck, you would need a soft block to put over the fretboard. Not an issue for this particular build. So, let's get started. I'm going to put glue on both surfaces that I'm gluing. So, some on here. And I'm using Type Bond for this. There are several different Type Bonds. A lot of people say Type Bond 1, I think, or 2 is the best for this sort of job. I'm using Type Bond 3 because I use it for a variety of stuff, including cutting boards, and it is food safe. And, uh, well, not really food safe, but you know what I mean. It's the right product for that, and it works just fine for this. So that's what I'm using. Really, as long as it's a decent quality glue, you can use it. I did that Home Depot, um, less, not Les Paul, Home Depot SG build using exclusively tools and stuff from Home Depot and no power tools. And for that, I just used simple LePage Carpenter's glue and that worked just fine. It's been holding up under string tension, no problem. I've been playing it with absolutely no issues. All right, we'll add some to the other surface as well, but not go too high up here. So we don't want glue on this area. We're gonna be painting that. It's not, an, it, not a real issue because it's going to get an opaque finish in that uh, opaque, which is like opaque finish on the back of the neck. But still, we don't want to be too crazy about how much we put in that area because glue can act as a sealer, but it can also be a pain to deal with after the fact if you have too much of it. All right. Nice little coat. Get her put in place here. Now, when you're doing this, I'm going to suggest that you try not to use too big a block for the back because if it gets in the way, see, I'm going to, I'm going to do is put it down here because if it gets in the way, then you can't really get in there to deal with excess glue if it squeezes out. side clamped in here. Now you can do this with one clamp, but two are better than one. The more clamps you can pack onto something, the more sturdy it's going to be and the more stable a clamp job you're going to get and the more stable a glue job you're going to get. Now this is an awkward way to do this off the edge of a table, but hey, so be it. Just make sure you're not accidentally crushing your frets on the corner there. Okay, that's it. We'll do a check for excess glue squeeze out. Very, very minimal. Use a damp cloth to wipe it away if there's too much, if there's anything worth wiping away there. I'm gonna toss this guy into my Hosco neck rest from none other than Solo Music Gear, of course. And I'm gonna leave that for about 24 hours. All right, we'll be back to put those pegs in. We're back, it's been a couple days. We got this neck glued in place. It is looking very nice, uh, nice and sturdy. Everything is as it should be. And we've also gotten our doweling to be able to plug those bridge holes. That's next up, we have to get that done before the finish. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, the only other thing that we've gotten in that time is a haircut because I desperately needed one. So what we're going to do now is cut this guy down to a reasonably appropriate size to plug these holes. Uh, and then we're going to plug those holes. Let's get to it. I just quickly used a set of calipers to measure the depth of the holes and mark those depths out twice on my dowel here. And you can see this is my Japanese razor saw. It cuts on the pull and it literally only takes two to three pulls to, uh, to cut that dowel down to size. 
This is a little trick I picked up uh, at the old shop I was working at when I was epoxying small parts together. To make a little tray for my glue, I just use a few pieces of masking tape, go ahead and squeeze my glue onto there, and then when I'm done I can just peel it off and the table stays clean. Uh, I'm just using my finger to apply it to the dowel, pretty straightforward, and then I'm going to press the dowel in place. And that's what I'm going to do for both of these. I'm just going to apply it with my finger and push it in really hard with my thumb. You may have to tap it into place with a hammer. It'll just depend on how tight that fit is. You do want it tight, um, but you need room for the glue as well. So you may have to tap it in. If you've got strong hands, you can probably push it in. Just be really careful that you're applying pressure from the back of the guitar as well, or you're doing it on a flat surface. If you're going to have it on a neck rest like this because it's an angled headstock, fine, but you have to push from the back of the guitar at the same time. Otherwise, you're going to put a lot of undue stress on that neck. Be very, very diligent about wiping up the extra glue after, particularly if you're working on a veneered top like this. You guys saw the absolute fiasco that that other guitar kit was, the crazy Chinese guitar kit as I've termed it, the hollow body one, because of glue marks, because of glue stains or whatever on the veneer. They don't take stain the same way. They are a problem, okay? So if you're doing a transparent finish, if you're working with a veneered top like this, be very careful about wiping up that extra glue. It's worth the extra effort to do that part properly. These plugs are cut just a little bit longer than the depth, of course. I want them to stick out a little bit so that I don't have a divot there. And I'm going to come in in our next video and sand them down flat. I'll probably take a little bit off the top with a hand plane as well, but that's a little bit risky, so I don't necessarily recommend it. That's with a little block plane. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And remember to subscribe so you can see how this kit turns out. The rest of this project should run along fairly smoothly um, because I actually, at the time of editing this and doing the voiceover, I filmed this quite a while ago. I need a haircut much more desperately now than I did back then because we're in the middle of a pandemic. But anyway, this guitar is pretty much done at this point and just needs to be assembled. So I shouldn't have very many excuses to delay. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you liked it. Have a good one, and I will see you next time.